Thank you for the, uh, to the organizers for having me here today. Here, these are my disclosures. I'm going to go over definitions of renal and liver impairment, uh, review some of the available data or lack of uh, data uh, from the pivotal clinical trials, uh, review individual targeted agents and the manufacturer's uh, uh, recommendations, uh, and fi uh, finish off with a phase one, uh, phase one data for safety of targeted agents in patients with renal and liver dysfunction. So just uh, starting off, this is uh, the National Kidney Foundation definition of chronic kidney disease, uh, defined as a GFR of less than 60 mLs per minute per 1.73 meters square. Uh, on, you'll see here on the table the various stages, and I have listed here the, the CTCAE grades that correlate to the various stages with grade 2, 3, and 4. Uh, in terms of renal insufficiency in kidney cancer patients, it occurs in up to about 50% of patients. Uh, this is what I've seen in the literature. These are patients uh, that are uh, older, median age of 65 years. These patients have chronic kidney disease from comorbidities such as diabetes, hypertension, and the majority of these patients have undergone nephrectomy. This is adapted from the CTCAE uh, 4, just looking at the grades of liver toxicity, ALT, AST, and bilirubin. I'm not going to go into the various grades, but this is what uh, we typically use uh, to grade our patients' toxicities. And the child pew classification is used uh, to uh, get a better understanding of severity of patients' uh, liver disease. Uh, this uses clinical and lab criteria such as encephalopathy, ascites, bilirubin, albumin, and uh, prothrombin time. You, you uh, give points according to the, the various uh, um, grades. And then there is class A, class B, and class C listed below based on the the points which correspond to the least severe liver disease, moderately severe, and also most severe. So looking at, at just first-line treatment of kidney cancer, I just um, added the serum creatinine here on the right and, and liver function criteria that were necessary to, to participate in these studies and looking at uh, the study of sinitinib, the two studies of bevacizumab, serafinib, phase two study, pazopinib, and tenserolimus, it excluded patients with a significant uh, uh, renal insufficiency or liver function. If you think of CTCAE for all of these inclusion criteria, you're looking at about uh, uh, grade one. Uh, the uh, sedentinib expanded access trial, similarly, uh, serum creatinine had to be less than two times upper limit of normal. And looking at the liver function, this is about a, a CTCAE uh, grade two. And the serafinib uh, expanded access trial uh, uh, excluded patients with a, a renal impairment who required uh, hemodialysis. So just to go through the, the various drugs, starting off with bevacizumab, the metabolism is nonspecific and clearance varies by body weight, gender, and tumor burden. There is no recommended dose reductions provided by the manufacturer's uh, la uh, labeling, either for uh, renal insufficiency or hepatic insufficiency. Uh, it does, it does recommend to suspend uh, for uh, proteinuria, as described here, and discontin discontinue in patients with nephrotic syndrome. For temserolimus, this is metabolized by the liver by CYP3A4 to serolimus and four minor metabolites. It's excreted via feces, less than 5% eliminated via urinary excretion. There is no dose adjustment necessary in renal impairment. This hasn't been studied in patients with uh, uh, on dialysis. In liver dysfunction, these are the recommendations that are, uh, rec that are made. It's contraindicated in moderate to severe liver dysfunction. For sinitinib and its metabolite, primarily metabolized by the liver as well, excreted via feces with a, a, approximately 16% of the drug eliminated by urinary excretion. Uh, there is no dose adjustment necessary for renal dysfunction if it's mild, moderate, or severe. Uh, for dialysis patients, there is no <coughs> initial dose adjustment necessary, although there is a recommendation that you can increase the dose of, of, of sinitinib because patients on dialysis seems to get less exposure by about 47 percent of the drug when they take it. Everyone's well aware of the, the black box warning for sinitinib for hepatotoxicity. Hepatotoxicity has been observed in clinical trials and post-marketing experience. Uh, this hepatotoxicity can be severe, and deaths have been reported. There is no dose, dose adjustment necessary if the liver dysfunction is mild or class A. Moderate class B has not been studied in class C. 
uh, patients. And the studies uh, uh, that have looked at uh, sinitinib excluded uh, patients with uh, ALTs, ASTs, uh, elevations as depicted here. For pazopinib, also metabolized primarily by the liver, uh, it's excreted via the feces with less than 4% of the drug eliminated by urinary excretion. There's no dose adjustment necessary for renal dysfunction. We're all very aware of the warning, uh, the black box warning for hepatotoxicity for pazopinib. There have been severe and fatal hepatotoxicity observed in clinical trials. Uh, and there is a recommendation by the manufacturer lab label that I, that I use uh, always uh, to monitor hepatic function and interrupt, reduce, or discontinue dosing as recommended. And I listed that here. So when you initiate patients on pazopinib, you want to monitor liver tests before treatment start, followed by uh, uh, weeks three, five, seven, and nine. Thereafter, you monitor at month three and at month four, and as clinically indicated, for isolated ALT elevation, as listed here, you may continue the drug with weekly monitoring of LFTs until the ALT returns to grade one or baseline. For isolated ALT elevations greater than eight times the upper limit of normal, you should interrupt the drug until grade one or baseline. And reduce the dose to 400 milligrams uh, with weekly LFTs for eight weeks. If this you, you, if you do get another elevation in the uh, ALT, AST, you should discontinue the drug. And discontinue permanently if ALT elevation is greater than three times upper limit of normal, plus bilirubin's elevation is greater than two times upper limit of normal. Finally, serafinib predominantly metabolized in the liver, excreted via the feces with about 20% of the drug eliminated by urinary excretion. There is no, do no dose adjustment necessary for renal dysfunction if mild, moderate, uh, severe. And I'm going to uh, finish off with uh, going over phase one uh, and pharmacokinetic study that looked at serafinib in patients with hepatic or renal dysfunction. This was the CALGB60301, which looked at 100, uh, two parts to it. The, the first part Nine. looked at 138 patients. These patients uh, had uh, different uh, tumor uh, types. There were about 30 plus patients with kidney cancer, hepatocellular uh, patients, and others. Uh, study uh, part two looked at uh, 124 patients, and this was a phase one dose escalation study uh, that looked at nine different cohorts. Uh, these are the cohort definitions for the study. Cohort one looked at uh, total, uh, total bilirubin that was normal and also uh, renal function that was normal, and these patients were started at 400 milligrams BID. And then on the, the middle column looks at the hepatic cohorts and the my slides keep advancing. The renal uh, column looked at uh, different, different uh, cohorts as well based on mild, moderate, severe, or very severe dysfunction. And I've highlighted here what the starting doses were for each cohort. Oops. Looking at just the hepatic cohorts, uh, this table just breaks down the cohort by mild, moderate, severe, and very severe dysfunction and the uh, LFTs, abnormalities associated with each. The number of patients, the number of patients entered and, ac and accessible, the number of DLTs, and finally the recommended starting dose for each cohort uh, provided by the authors. And looking at the renal cohort, same broken down by mild dysfunction, moderate, severe, very severe dysfunction, the number of patients entered and, sorry, this thing keeps going forward, accessible, number of DLTs and the recommended dosing of uh, starting dose for patients with mild, moderate, severe, and very severe renal dysfunction. As you can see, going back to the hepatic uh, cohort six, patients they didn't even tolerate a, uh, a very low dose of serafinib that was given every three days as did uh, the severe dysfunction cohort seven here. And this looks at the, uh, it's a dot plot of the area under the curve for AUC of serafinib by cohort, and there was no, no difference across uh, all uh, cohorts and AUC. 
So in, in conclusion, patients with renal and liver dysfunction are excluded from clinical trials. Patients with various degrees of dysfunction may be treated safely with targeted agents. It is important to modify doses and frequently monitor these patients as recommended. Uh, prospective studies, including patients with renal and liver uh, dysfunction, are key in providing guidance to the treating physician. Thank you.